The United States wants to slow climate change by plugging leaks in oil and gas wells and maybe reducing the consumption of meat. Washington's plan involves a global strategy to reduce methane emissions. Now, the proposal comes as world leaders continue those crucial talks in Glasgow. The Biden administration says 90 countries have signed up to the methane pledge. The potent greenhouse gas comes mainly from the production of oil and gas, as well as livestock. And the UN says that it's the fastest way to slow climate change in the short term. Live to Laura Macon Isherwood in Glasgow in just a moment. But first, a look at what's at stake on day two. Methane is one of the main causes of climate change, almost 80 times more potent than carbon dioxide. And it will be in focus on day two of crunch climate talks in Glasgow. U.S. President Joe Biden is set to formally launch a global effort to slash emissions of the greenhouse gas by 30 percent from 2020 levels by the end of the decade. Nearly 90 countries have joined the effort spearheaded by the U.S. and EU. For the first time, Brazil says it will sign the pledge. It's one of the world's five biggest emitters of methane. Earlier, world leaders pledged to save our forests. In the first major deal of the summit, they vowed to end deforestation by 2030, including Indonesia, which says deforestation rates have fallen to a 20-year low. The pledge could protect more than 30 million square kilometers of forests. It will be backed by nearly $20 billion in public and private funds. Had you spoken to me, um, you know, five days ago, uh, I also would have been uh, apprehensive about whether we would have landed this agreement on forests. But we have. And, um, you know, it's looking really um, encouraging uh, now today. This is a, a big breakthrough. Keep it in the ground. Just keep it in the ground. Still, many conservationists note that similar pledges have been made and not met. They say words need to be backed by action. Change is not going to come from inside there. That is not leadership. This is leadership. This is what leadership looks like. The COP26 summit is seen as a last-ditch attempt to stave off a climate disaster, with host Boris Johnson warning of uncontainable anger from younger generations if leaders fail to act decisively. Laura Macon Isherwood joins us live now from Glasgow. Laura, an alliance of 90 countries, even Brazil, but some major emitters haven't signed on to President Joe Biden's methane pledge. No, and notably they include Russia, China and India, some of the biggest uh, greenhouse gas, gas emitters in the world. And of course, we know that China and Russia have not sent their leaders. They've not arrived here either to talk about these kinds of pledges. So while uh, the US President Joe Biden will be seeing this as a bit of a coup, getting Brazil on board to agree to his pledge to cut uh, methane emissions by 30 uh, percent of 2020 levels by 2030, there's still a long way to go if we really want to hit uh, targets to try and reduce countries' emissions and move towards that net zero by 2050 target that a lot of countries are setting out. And of course, we're waiting for more details about exactly how each of the 90 countries that have signed up will do this. Hopefully, we'll get more of that by the end of this summit. And Laura, the next few hours are going to be crucial as, as world leaders are going to leave COP26 tomorrow, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. These first two days were all about, you know, the photo calls, getting these leaders together, 120 of them, plus representatives from uh, tens of other nations here, getting them around the ta table to talk about these big ideas. But they will head off uh, in the next few hours. Then it's up to each of these nations' chief negotiators to take over and try and thrash out more of these deals. Of course, we've heard big pledges about money being spent on uh, developing countries moving towards greener economies. We've had that deforestation pledge as well announced this morning. But we have another uh, almost two weeks left of this climate summit. So it's up to chief negotiators now to really do the hard work and see if they really can come up with the goods to try to cut global emissions and save the planet effectively from potential catastrophe of the impact of climate change and global temperatures rising. Laura, thank you for that update. Laura making issue with there in Glasgow.